Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Amanda Lacaz of Linus Corporation. How are you today, Amanda? I'm good, thanks, Tracy. How are you? I'm fantastic, and we're delighted to have you because we're dying to talk to you about the debt amendment that you've recently facilitated. Let's get right into it, and can you give our audience an overview of what you've basically just negotiated? Yeah, so what we've actually negotiated is actually virtually all elements of the amendments. The most important thing is that it's time. We've negotiated additional time through to uh, mid-2020 on the JARA um, uh, facility and the 30th of September 2020 on the convertible bond. Uh, as well as that, we've uh, significantly reduced the interest liabilities. So the current interest rate on JARA is 6%. It drops to 2.5%. The current interest rate on the convertible bond is 2.75%. It drops to 1.25%. Um, as well as that, we've changed the um, – uh, previously we had fixed uh, fixed amortisation schedule for the repayment of principal on the JARA um, facility, and now all of that is due at the end of the loan and will only make payments in the interim based upon uh, how much cash we have in the business. So it's much more tied to cash flow of the business and it's recognising the market volatility. So the most important thing is the time because, as you know and as everybody who's observed the rare earths markets knows, um, it's the rare earths market at present, the price does not reflect demand. We expect that at some stage those two things will come back, uh, will normalise, and at that time, you know, we, we're in a very good position to, to, to make, um, uh, to deliver a good outcome. And of course, I understand there are numerous complexities in this deal. So one writer commented that uh, in addition to time, that the interest rate savings might uh, exceed 70 million. Can you talk to us a little bit about the numbers? Yes, yes. So certainly the interest rate savings uh, are around about 70 million. And that's a combination of there is a portion of interest which is forgiven, which is actually for the period from uh, 2014 to 2015. That's on the uh, the JRA facility, um, and then as well there's simply the the savings in the liabilities based upon the interest rate over the remaining duration of the loan. In addition. Um, under the current agreement, we actually have 50 million US payable as principal between now and the 31st of December 2017, and all of that has now been pushed out to the end of 2020. Um, you know, people might say, "Well, what have you had to give in return for this?" And uh, so, in terms of the things that, that, that Linus has needed to bring to the table, and one of these is very important, and our shareholders will need to vote on it on the 30th of November at our AGM, is that we've agreed to reset the conversion price with the convertible bond to 10 cents per share. That's still at something like a 40, just over 40% premium to the price that it's currently trading at. Uh, as well as that, we have granted 10% warrants at an exercise price of $0.05. Cents, and we have agreed a new availability offtake agreement with JARA to ensure that we continue to supply the Japanese market with NDPR. So we think that it's uh, actually a very, very good deal for shareholders and uh, we look forward to, uh, at the AGM, we hope that the shareholders will vote positively for it. And of course, what I would really love to ask you, because we're seeing signs of increasing interest in rare earths and a, and a potential, we believe that it's inevitable that there has to be an increase in rare earth prices. Amanda, obviously you have a better understanding of this than we do. What do you think we as shareholders and new potential shareholders should anticipate, say, in the next six months to a year with rare earth prices? Oh, look, it's very difficult. I think that I've actually probably done better 
picking when 35 is going to come up on the roulette wheel than I have been at picking when rare earth prices are going to change. It's uh, um, it's sort of the rare earth market is such a complex market and, and we find demand is strong and you would have seen in our quarterly report that we continue to sell everything that we produce and we're producing more than we've ever produced before. And uh, customers are still wanting to buy from us, and that normally would say, therefore, price should be should be strong. Um, we would hope that this this amendment is a good signal to everybody that Linus is here to stay. If there are any um, people still harbouring a view that keeping the price low might actually lead to Linus's demise. And uh, we would we would hope that, as said, over time that the price will normalise and it will reflect the strong demand. You know, remembering rare earths are important in a number of the technologies which consumers are demanding today. And of course, Jack Lipton and I were discussing the demand. Uh, Japan is the number two user globally of rare earths. Can you add anything else uh, that maybe the shareholders you'd like them to understand before they go into the AGM and vote with regards to the complexities of this debt amendment deal? Um, yes, I, I think that it is really important for shareholders to understand that whilst they are only being asked to vote on the single element, which is the change in the conversion price to 10 cents for the convertible bond. Um, and we have included in the resolution also the warrants. Uh, they need Our shareholders do need to understand that all elements of the package are interdependent. And so therefore, if they don't vote uh, affirmatively for resolution four it is on the AGM which re which deals with the reset of the conversion price and deals with the warrants then all elements of the debt amendments will actually lapse immediately and as indicated in our recent um, financial report for the year ended 30th of June 2016, and also in a number of our other communications to the market, Linus continues to be marginally better than a break-even business on a cash basis and before financing charges. And there is some concern about the ability to be a going concern if shareholders don't vote um, affirmatively. But I'm pretty confident that shareholders will see the good sense and the logic of, of this set of amendments, and they are significantly favourable to our business. And speaking of favourable, your Q1 results, uh, I read you had 57.4 million Australian in sales receipts for Q1. Can you give us some of the highlights uh, for your quarterly update? Yeah, so I think it's quite interesting because when um, a business like Linus is in its startup phase, every quarter's results have something new and exciting and different happening. You know, there's new equipment being commissioned or there's new sales. I, I think that now that we're at 100% of our um, plant commissioned and operating, uh, our quarterly updates now become much more about business as usual and about continued and incremental improvements. And so this is the first quarter where we have had a full quarter's worth of full production as uh, for of NDPR. Well, actually, we're operating at about 90% of capacity. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so I think that what you're seeing now is the stable output and our ability to actually serve our customers in a timely fashion. Okay. Well, you know, we, of course, anticipate the shareholders approving the debt amendment at the AGM, but what should we anticipate perhaps in the next uh, upcoming quarter once the AGM and the voting has taken place? So I think that after after we've got this new debt arrangement in place, we, we are really faced with now what other ways can we create value for our shareholders? 
And so we're looking at a, a, a variety of different options there. Of course, we can create value by continuing to drive additional um, efficiencies in the business, and we have a very solid plan for driving the cost down further by improving the way that we run our plant and, and, and the efficiency that we bring to work every day. Uh, we need to look at are there new revenue streams. You know, there are ways as we continue to increase, um, you know, our, our production above nameplate, there are ways that we can actually take material at different stages through the process and potentially create new revenue streams. And then, of course, there are opportunities to partner with um, other rarest companies, um, other companies in other parts of the supply chain, uh, and, and, and find ways to create greater value for the business there. So it is not our plan to do this and then to sit quietly with our fingers crossed hoping that the rare earths price will go up. We need to find other ways to add value to our business and that's what we will be doing. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure as always. Thanks so much, Tracy.